Future state, Robin Eternal issue number two. Holy shit, man. <laughs> this book really just surprised me. I think you get a clear sense that Megan Fitzmartin, who's the writer of this book, really likes Tim Drake, which I think everybody does. If you hate Tim Drake, you're pretty much an asshole, I think. Like, does anybody hate this guy? If you do, what's wrong with you? Tim Drake's the best. He's the best Robin. This book was surprisingly good. I, I went in, I liked the first issue a lot. I didn't know what to expect with the second one. Is Tim going to have some weird power connected to the Lazarus resin? Turns out, yes. Turns out he's stronger now. So we open up this book. He's like, oh, there's a lot of narration by Tim in here, which I get because it's kind of like dealing with the Lazarus pit and the effects of like some weird stuff on you. But he's just like, I feel stronger. Is this how Jason feels every day? And he just punches the head off one of the robots. And he's just talking to himself like, okay, okay, I got to take out the magistrate. Everything's going to be fine. My family's counting on me. I can't let my family down. Everything's going to be fine. I feel stronger. I'm alive. Everything's good. We'll take everything down. So Tim just goes ham on all the agents that are coming to attack them. Darcy and Stephanie are like, we got to get some more information on what's going on here to figure some stuff out. But Tim's just wrecking shop and it's looking pretty fun. But we realize that there's a Peacemaker on board, Peacemaker 13, who is probably going to be one of the biggest threats to this group. And they're trying to make their way through. But as Tim is fighting, he starts to have these weird visions of his former life or just some weird memories happening. One of them being Two-Face, which I'm like, cool. I'm glad they used Two-Face because, you know, Jason Todd, he'd probably see the Joker for some reason. Nightwing might even see the Joker. But I love that Two-Face is here. Two-Face is my favorite Batman villain. I love the character a lot. So we like Tim starts to hallucinate that he's fighting Two-Face. Him and Stephanie are in like their old costumes. They both look younger. He's not even a Robin. And they're just fighting. And he's fighting to kind of like protect her. And to show that he's worthy to be the title. Because then he starts having these weird visions of Dick and Damien. And they're like, you're not enough. You were never our father. You can't save this city on your own. You never want to. And he's just trying to like, he's just flipping out pretty much. And I love it a lot. The artwork is so good. It is actually very breathtaking to see some of the pencils and lines work. They just look amazing. This Tim is freaking out bad. I kind of like the shot where like you see a close up of his face and the green like resins like dripping off of him. It kind of like in the shape of a mask covering his whole face, kind of matching the Robin logo. I thought that looked pretty damn cool. And they're all fighting, so they kind of figured out, like, we have to find a way to dilute this somehow, and that might mean pouring it into the Gotham Reservoir, which is classic stuff going on there. And as it's going on, Tim again is just fighting everybody, and he's just, like, just like, I got this. Everything's under control. It's great. We're great. So they're going to go dump it to the reservoir to dilute it and get it out there. They beat all the people. They're headed to their next location to kind of, like, figure out how they can stop everything and I like this page too because it's pretty much just like Stephanie looking at Tim like you do not look well are you okay like you pretty much died and now you're back and you're you're struggling to hang on but Tim's just like oh I'll be alive if I can help it I'll be alive and I love this I love this like voice in in Tim's head that's just like yeah you're gonna keep fighting because if you don't stephanie is probably going to lose control of everything she has she has lost way too many people and then if you become that final nail in the coffin she will never be able to like live with herself and all that stuff so it's pretty much like tim's fighting for stephanie which i love i love that idea that's really cool and fun so they're like okay behind this door is uh is peacemaker or not peacemaker is peacekeeper 13 like, yeah, okay, let's go save Gotham. Tim just bursts open the door, and we see that the Peacekeeper 13 is wearing a red mask. And instantly, my mind's like, don't tell me this is Jason. I don't need to hear that shit. I think it's supposed to invoke something like Jason Todd, but who really knows? It, it's a clearly a red mask, but whatever. So they start to fight. They're getting, like, it's just another fight. Everyone's beating each other up, and they're having their good time. Tim's taking some names, kicking some ass, but he starts to have visions again that he has to keep saving Stephanie, that he needs to save Stephanie, and centering him from the fight, Stephanie gets chained up by one of the guards, and Darcy gets kidnapped by this like weird figure of a Batman that's haunting Tim throughout this entirety of the book, and we realize that it's Peacekeeper 13, and they're losing, but Tim just kind of like, I am smarter than all of them, I am the best, I might not be Batman, but I'm a damn good Robin, and he punches out Red Hood Peacekeeper, takes him down Darcy's safe he sets something off on one of the machines that took Stephanie with them so she'll be okay after a while she'll be fine he's okay 
everything's good. And we don't see spoilers again in the book, which is weird. <laughs> like, like we get an editor's note that spoiler will continue in future state, the next Batman issue too. Okay. I'm pretty sure that book came out way before this one. <laughs> so good to know we have to go back and get that if we weren't following that story. That's great. Weird. Weird place to end that book, but that's pretty cool. So Tim takes Darcy and he bursts through the window. They land on top of a different building. And, you know, Tim gets her to safety, but he falls to his supposedly death again. But come on, Tim Drake's already dead. What he is now is just a Robin thing. And he bursts out of the water. It's like nothing's ever the end. And that's kind of where the book ends. <laughs> and I, I like that. I like this book a lot. I think it was way more intense than I was expecting. It's kind of ballsy that in the middle of this like big title thing with Future State that we're like, let's tell the most human Tim Drake story we've had in a long time. This is a man who has struggled to be a member of the Bat family or be important in the stories for a long time. So we're going to give him his opportunity to be the last pretty much main member of the Bat family still operating in like the daylight. He's going to be the one that's still out there doing what needs to be done. I think that's pretty cool. He's trying to honor his father and his brothers pretty much, his family. He's trying to honor his family and he's having these doubts about it. And when he gets into the Lazarus resin, the way he's seeing visions that are supposedly driving lesser men mad, like people like Jason Todd and even Ray Shal Ghul to some extent, he's able to fight through it and do the right thing, even if it's slowly breaking him. But he saves them. He saves the women of his life, which is very important for Tim Drake, because Tim Drake is only cooler when he has some strong women at his side. And I really like that angle of the book. And it was really cool. It was really fun. The writing worked really well like i said there's a clear understanding of tim drake's importance to the audience you are representing the book to which is something i really enjoy there's a clear care about the tim drake and stephanie brown relationship there's a good use of darcy in here just the way it's building off the magistrate lore everything about this book it works really well and it ends on a high note where it's like kind of like the resurrection in an essence of the tim drake character from his death at the beginning of the book to his death at the end I think it is really cool and really fun. Just a nice different kind of book with a Robin. I'm really enjoying. I, I like this one. I hope we can see more titles with Tim Drake in them. Uh, he, 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 he could hold his own. He could definitely hold his own. And I think this book proves it. Really cool character. Really great way to introduce the mythos of the Batman universe into this future state title. So I enjoyed that a lot. And I think you guys will enjoy it too. It's a very strong read. One of the best books from the Batman family. I will say... So, Robin Eternal issue number two, I am going to give an 8 out of 10. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.